From KPBS and PRX, this is Port of Entry. Where we tell cross-border stories that connect us. I'm Natalie Gonzalez. And I'm Alan Liliental. So it's no secret that people have been smoking weed way long before it was legalized here in California in 2016. And even though weed has been going back and forth across the U.S.-Mexico border for years, well, cannabis is still not legal in Mexico. And people in Mexico and along the border have a really negative perception about marijuana. Sometimes trying to change those ideas can make you end up in jail. I did a public manifestation in La Calle Revolución, which is the, the main street of downtown Tijuana. And I, I sit there with two plants of cannabis and a jar full of cannabis. Because I knew I had the rights, and I had the amparo, and I had the permit, and I had everything. They just got to me and told me, you know what, you're under arrest. And I was like, hey, dude, I have, I have my permit, I have, I have every, everything in order. And the supervisor basically told me, nobody has told me that this is legal now. My name is Juan Carlos Guerrero. I'm a farmer and a politician and an activist for cannabis for the past two and a half years. So you just heard Juan Carlos Guerrero. He is a true Tijuanense who, like many of us, sees the border region for what it really is a big land of untapped potential. He's got many ideas and proposals to make Tijuana a much better place to live. My dad is American, my mom is Mexican. The dynamic for me has been, has been weird because I always have the right to, to cross the border, if, even now, right, with the, the pandemics. And it's, it's really hard to see that there's a lot of uh, broken dreams of people that just get thrown here in Tijuana. Uh, uh, because they're not, they're not American. I feel like uh, a huge responsibility of making the world a little bit better. Uh, because I was born in one place, I have, my opportunities are huge. Juan Carlos is a politician, and one of the issues he's campaigned on is the legalization of cannabis in Baja California. The journey of Juan Carlos in politics and cannabis has been a ride of ups and downs. And it all started when he was a 16-year-old high school student at one of the oldest and largest schools in Tijuana, which is called Lazaro Cárdenas. And actually, my dad and a bunch of my friends studied there, too. Ooh, Lazaro Cárdenas alumna. Yeah. <laughs> While Juan Carlos was getting an education, he also got involved with protests, along with other friends and students, because the quality of the cafeteria food was really bad. I was 16, and yeah, we, we, we paralyzed the school until we got right conditions to buy in the cafeteria, and the food was not uh, wrong or made us ill. And that, made, that gave me an invitation of the only two parties that there were in Baja, which was PRI and PAN, El PRI y El PAN. And that's, that's how I started in politics. After this event at such a young age, Juan Carlos joined one of the strongest and most influential political parties in Mexico. But here's one thing about the world of politics, especially in Mexico. Nepotism is all over the place, and sometimes it's very, very difficult to make it or achieve a higher rank through merits, especially in a political party so old and so conservative like the one he was part of back then. And some, someone <laughs> picked up the phone and called the national president of the party and told him, I want my grandson to, to be the candidate. And, and yeah, that happened. He was a candidate, I, I wasn't. And I got really disappointed that that, that that got to me. And I just decided to quit my political career by, by then, and yeah. So along with being a young politician, Juan Carlos has also been a farmer in Tijuana since he was 15 years old, way before he became a politician. He actually has greenhouses where he grows fruits and veggies like 
strawberries, lettuce, basil. So after these events, he decided to stop his political career and go back to farming. He had a friend up in Trinity County in Northern California who was working as a trimmer of cannabis plants. That friend invited him to move up there and start working as a farmer and grower. So in 2015, he basically said, see you later, and moved to Trinity County. And while he was up there, he started to learn a lot about growing cannabis. Eventually, he brought all that knowledge back to Tijuana. This is a new season of Port of Entry. And this time, we have stories about crossing the border to change minds. Changing minds through drugs. You heard that right. Drugs on both sides of the border. Illegal drugs, legal drugs, therapeutic drugs. Drugs that shouldn't really be called drugs because they're more like plants. Yeah, and also changing minds through the performing arts. The magic that theater has to change perspectives. And in this first episode, we're introducing you to some people who are working really hard to change the legal status of cannabis in Tijuana and are working also to change the way people think about weed in border communities. We are super happy to be back and thank you so much for joining us for this new season. Hello. There's a new podcast from TED called Am I Normal? I'm Mona Chalabi, and every episode I will tackle a question that I need an answer to. On this season, how long does it take to get over a breakup? How many friends should I have? And what is spermageddon? Together, we'll dig into the numbers, consult experts, strangers, and even my mum to get the bigger picture. Check out Am I Normal on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen. Y estamos de vuelta. So, Juan Carlos worked up north in California, growing weed for like three or four years. I saw the, the industry, I saw the possibilities, I saw the benefits for the people in, in Weaverville, which was the city I was living in. And being a farmer, I, I could see how we could make this happen. He spent a good amount of time trimming and growing in Trinity County and learning a lot about cannabis cultivation and the whole industry. However, he was away for long periods of time from his family and friends. My daughter is here in Tijuana, uh, my friends, my er, everything, my family, everything is in, here in Tijuana. And yeah, that, that's basically what, one day I was there and the next day I, I just said goodbye and I grabbed my stuff and came back. Entonces, when Juan Carlos came back to Tijuana in 2018, he realized the cannabis industry was just starting to emerge here. And he saw this as an opportunity to start doing something that he knew. That's when I opened my eyes that I already know about plants. I already know I have greenhouses. I, I wanted to professionalize myself as a farmer in, in cannabis cultivation. And yeah, I, I came back to Tijuana knowing a lot, knowing that I, that I had a lot more to learn than what I have already learned, but knowing that I, I knew enough that I could make something happen. So he reached out to a couple of friends with a law firm in search of obtaining something called an amparo, which translates roughly into protection in English. So here's the thing. Let me explain this to you. While growing, selling, consuming cannabis is still technically illegal in Mexico, a Supreme Court ruling a few years ago fully decriminalized it. And then, in 2021, the federal Senate passed a general law to legalize cannabis. But since then, nothing has happened to actually put that law into practice. It is stalled, essentially held up, and many believe because of opposition from national political figures. So this amparo that Juan Carlos got is basically a protection granted by that Supreme Court ruling against any action that lesser authorities might take. Now, he has the legal right to grow and consume marijuana for his own personal use. The amparo means he can have weed and cannot be prosecuted. So after a long process of two years and a half, two years, a federal judge 
told the federal government that they have to let me, allow me to do what I, what I wanted, which was develop my personality through cannabis. I actually have it with me. I brought it to show it to you, the result of El Amparo, oh. which is... Wow. So what are you looking at? I'm looking at a legal document with a lot of words. numbers and words, and it kind of looks like hieroglyphics to me. Okay, sembrar, cultivar, cosechar, preparar, poseer y transportar la adquisición legal de la semilla de cannabis. Sativa, indica y americana. <laughs> and guess what? Juan Carlos was the first person in Baja California to get this amparo. In fact, when the authorities issued it, everyone came out from the back office to check it out. And there was a lot of excitement, like, whoa, this is new, this is so cool. I said, you know what, now I have the document, I have an official thing, I have to do something with this. And my first, the first idea that came to my head was show some plants publicly. And that's, that's how it happened. And I, I just sit in the middle of Revolución with the plants, with a jar full of weed, of actual flour, and just let people know about the plant. And yeah, this is the part where Juan Carlos gets arrested. And, well, he ended up in the state jail. Yep, and of course, he was not supposed to get arrested because he has this amparo, this legal permit we just talked about that allows him to be in possession of cannabis. So his arrest was pretty much illegal. Pretty much. But anyway, he was put inside a cell with like 15 drug addicts. And it was, it was people that have a serious problem with addiction, which I, I do believe they, they don't belong in jail. They belong in a... Re rehabilitation fa facility or something like that. But don't worry about him too much because eventually he was moved to another cell with different people. Yep, with murderers and robbers. Oh, that sounds way more chill. I'm Super so glad. safe. I'm so happy for him. I get to a new jail. I lay on the floor. I try to sleep. And one, two, three hours, half an hour, I don't know. After that, the guy that was next to, to me, another guy, starts yelling at him, like trying to go at him. And after like 20 seconds of the rant that this guy was having with, with my my cell neighbor, <laughs> I looked at him like, hey, dude, are you going to beat the shit out of this guy or can I go back to sleep? <laughs> Long ago, when the public square was the only place to share news, events, and happenings, people were drawn to it. Living in community with others was the route to understanding each other and the world around us. The public square has changed dramatically, but our need to learn and understand one another has it. This is Port of Entry. The Parker Edison Project. Listener supported KPBS Cinema Junkie. Thank you for listening to KPBS Podcast and for being part of our region's virtual public square, where you learn not only about the headlines of the day, but about culture, music, and the issues that are important to all of us. Help keep the virtual square alive and well. Support podcasts like the one you're listening to right now. Just go to kpbs.org, click the blue Give Now button, and make a donation. And thanks again. Ya estamos de vuelta. And so... After spending 10 long and sad years in prison. 10 years? Psych, just kidding. No, don't worry about Juan Carlos. He got out after like 30 hours. Because, like we said before, he was not doing anything illegal or wrong. Yes. Most people didn't actually knew that, that there was a legal way to get cannabis and all that. But that's, that's part of the activism or the activist work. Like show people the way to, to be able to do it yourself. So Juan Carlos knew a lot about the cannabis industry, and he was trying to educate people while breaking the stigma of weed. And all of these things combined pushed him back into politics. But this time he joined a different and more liberal political party called Movimiento Ciudadano. The Citizen Movement. And in 2021, he ran as a candidate for state congress. So they called me back in November, December. And they told me, you know what, we're looking for citizens that are 
politically active, that they're doing activism for social causes, and you seem like the right fit for cannabis, you know, and, and do you want the candidacy? So I said yes, without actually believing that that was going to happen. When it comes to making big decisions, there is often a special someone to help us make the big jump. My daughter told me, she's, she's a very wise little one, she's almost 12, uh, and she told me like that, if you're there, you're going to be able to do more, right? I love politics, everything is politics. We are doing politics right now. <laughs> it's, the, it's the only profession or social activity that actually affects everyone around. And, and what is sad about politics right now and why everyone rejects politicians is the fact that the people that has the will and, and the capacity of making good for everyone, that has the ideas and, and, and the talent, they get tired pretty quickly of dealing with parasites. So listen, cuando te mueves en el mundo de la política, ser congruente es un elemento clave para que las personas confíen en ti. For sure, you have to have integrity and be true to your word to get people to trust you. That's why so many people don't trust politicians, because yeah, they exactly. don't. So during his campaign, Juan Carlos had a very good point to prove. I, uh, I have a commitment. I'm not going to smoke again until it's legal. Uh, even though I have a right. If I have a right that you don't have, what I have is a privilege. So I, right now I have the privilege of smoking legally and, and to grow plants legally. But I'm pretty sure that everyone that has a privilege, they have to do, use that privilege to fight for, for the underprivileged. I'm already a politician. I'm, I have it in my blood. So that, there's no activity that I'm going to do that I'm going to just take away that part of me. Sometimes our perception of people involved in politics is not the prettiest one. Or to put it in different words, it can be very hard to trust politicians when you live in a country with a lot of corruption and impunity. Juan Carlos is completely aware of this. However, he also believes that being part of this influential world is super important in order to make a real change in society and have an impact. You have to go to, to, the, to the public officer. You have to go to the congressman. You have to go to the city councilor. You have to go to the mayor or the governor or the president. So uh, knowing that, all the ideas that I have to benefit society, to, to do a, a collective good, it's through public office. So that, that's why I was candidate this time, and I'm going to keep pursuing all this. So back in the spring of 2021, our former producer, Kinsey Moreland, and I joined Juan Carlos at a campaign event on Tijuana's east side. How are you? Oh, good. How are you? Hey, Alan. Alan, how are you? Muy bien, güey. Muy bien, muy bien. Good to see you. Qué chido que estás caminando nomás así con tu plantita. We're here in Cuba. Cool. <laughs> is this your plant? This is mine. You grew, you These grew are from... the first legal plants. In Tijuana. In Tijuana, yeah, yeah. Wow, look at this. Yeah. Little well, pioneers. Yeah. This, this is real, this is real. See wow. the one. He's been campaigning. I think this is his last, his last public campaign, public campaign event before the election, which is in like a week or two. Um, and it's kind of a publicity stunt of sorts, right? He's having, he's gonna have a few cannabis plants out in public, um, which is not legal in Tijuana, but he has a special permit, so that's why he's protected and how he's doing it to kind of bring attention to the fact that weed is becoming legal and it would be very beneficial for Tijuana and for Mexico to legalize cannabis. So we're here. I see the plants actually out of, the, out of my side, side view mirror. You see the pot plants? I see some pot plants. Oh, They're pretty small, the little, little babies. So what time is the event? It's at 4.20. <laughs> what time All right. is it right now? How many minutes? It's 4 o'clock, exactly. All right, so... Let me, um, roll, up, let me roll up that joint. <laughs> Just kidding. ¿Qué <laughs> pasó? So during the campaign event, Juan Carlos was talking with people who were just driving by and telling them about his proposals and, of course, asking them to vote for him. Honestly, it was hilarious. I've never been to a political event like this because he was going from car to car with two little weed plants saying... Mota legal, mota legal. Mota legal, legal weed. That sounds super crazy and super cool. <laughs> only politician I want. <laughs> the only politician we need. 
generar 50 mil empleos en Baja California y 500 millones de dólares de recaudación en impuestos. Con 500 millones de dólares podemos garantizar el agua, garantizar becas para los niños, asegurar el desayuno y la comida en todas las escuelas de Baja California. Voten por mí el 6 de junio, por favor. Juan Carlos Guerrero, Movimiento Ciudadano. Look, I'm going to be totally honest with you. I have seen politicians at campaign events like this before. And when they approach me to talk about their proposals, I don't pay much attention to what they're saying or even take the energy to remember their names. But, si yo hubiera pasado por ahí y hubiera visto las plantas de weed, I would totally remember the name of this politician holding two legal plants of weed. <laughs> yeah, it's unforgettable. It is. Especially in Mexico. Yes, especially in Mexico. Ironically, because I, I'm in an orange shirt with, with all the pol political posture, they close the windows when they see me. But when they see the plant, they open the window and they lower the volume in the radio. So, yeah. So here's the thing about weed in Mexico. Or at least I'm going to speak for Baja California. Tijuana has always been known as a kind of lawless place. Easy access to cannabis, you know? Tijuana, tequila, sexo y marihuana. But come on, it's more complex than that. Yeah, a lot of our parents and Mexican people have different and maybe outdated ideas about weed. Some people believe the legalization of cannabis will bring more crime to the country. And this is because weed has always been controlled by the drug cartels. There is also a complete lack of information on the subject because some people also believe cannabis somehow creates drug addicts. Yeah, this weed taboo that has been circulating for years, according to Juan Carlos, is pure hypocrisy. I agree with him. My main line right now throughout my campaign is stop being a hypocrite. Don't be a hypocrite. Cannabis has been around for a while and fortunes have, have been made through cannabis. And, and, and saying that that doesn't exist, is, it's basically hypocrisy. So you know how they say that a series of small actions can build up and have a big impact on something? Well, Juan Carlos lost this election in 2021, and he never became a state congressman. But all the things he's been doing to break the cannabis taboo alongside hundreds of other weed activists across Mexico, has made an impact in the country's progress towards legalization. Yeah, and speaking out in order to bring important issues that nobody wants to talk about to the table is exactly what activism is about. Mm -hmm. Activismo. So my, my activism, it's, it's far from the decision makers, but I, I think what I, we're doing here in the North and, and my activism in Tijuana and making Tijuana, a leader in the industry, is gonna is gonna actually influence Ciudad de México. The fact that our government, uh, our governor, presented a bill, had impact in Ciudad de México. Like, hey, there's a state that is trying to do this, and we we have to 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 hit the the gas. You know, we have to make this move faster. So in a way, Juan Carlos always knew the possibilities of winning were limited. Still, he says, they got way more votes than they were expecting. But losing has never been a reason for Juan Carlos to stop his activism. We built something. That, that, that was the first time that I was a candidate, and I, I'm pretty sure it's not going to be the last. I was going to ask you, you have, you have plans to run again? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to keep pursuing the, 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 the public space so I, I, can, I can use my abilities to help other people. Think about this. We are living in the busiest border region in the world. Two cities always compared and contrasted. One is good, one is bad, one is rich, one is poor. But if we step back and we see it for what it is, a place that is interconnected, the cannabis industry could learn from and benefit from the experiences on both sides of the border. I mean, if cannabis is a medicine, and it truly is, it doesn't care if you're Mexican or American or what it says on your passport. We're next to California. And the biggest market and the biggest producer of cannabis in the world right now is California. Like, I, 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 I'm doing what I'm doing because I was able to work in California 
for five years in a, in a cannabis uh, uh, farm, like a, a big one. So at the, the fact that we're right next to California, that the biggest market is right next to us, give us a, the opportunity to learn. By 2024, when Juan Carlos runs again, because he will, the hope is for cannabis to already be legal. I'm going to do everything that's on my hands to, to make it legal. It's not just me doing it. There's a lot of activists nationwide like pushing this. So I, I'm pretty sure that the collective effort is going to make this happen by the end of next year. It's going to be something uh, already, like something in the industry already going on. Uh, good things happening in the cannabis industry. Of course, legalizing weed is not the only thing Juan Carlos is trying to achieve. He has so many good proposals that are so important to Tijuana. Or, you know, any place in the world. Like making sure kids are receiving a proper education. Things so basic like having access to clean water. He's really committed and pushing the bar to making his home a place where everyone can have a dignified life. I love my, my, my young days here in Tijuana. I, I love my, my uh, being a child here in Tijuana, being a teenager here in Tijuana and being a young adult here in Tijuana, Tijuana has been good to me. That's because there's jobs, there's money, there's opportunities. So I'm, I'm gonna try to, to keep the essence of Tijuana intact and do what I have to do so Tijuana is still the, the, the land of opportunities. On the next episode of Port of Entry, we look into the opportunities that legalizing cannabis may bring to this border community. California in general has the best weed in the world. You know, California cannabis is the brand. We talk with the most famous weed shop owner in San Isidro, just north of the border, and ask some of their cross-border customers how cannabis has improved their lives. I feel like Mexico is very controlled by drugs that don't need to be controlled. Like, that's is that even a drug? It's a plant. You know what I mean? Also, we meet an empresario, an entrepreneur, in Tijuana, who's been preparing for legalization with a very creative business venture. My name is Pedro Gastelum, and I'm the owner of Tijuana High Club. Tijuana High Club is a smoke shop. We hope we can be the first one selling weed in Tijuana. If you want to learn more about Juan Carlos and his work, you can go check his webpage, juancagro.mx, that's J-U-A-N-C-A-G-R-O dot M-X or follow him on Facebook at Juan Cagro M-X. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Port of Entry Pod. This episode of Port of Entry was written and produced by Natalie Gonzalez and Elisa Barba. Adrián Villalobos is the director of sound design. Elisa Barba is also our editor. Lisa Morissette is operations manager. And John Decker is the interim associate general manager of content. This program is made possible in part by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, a private corporation funded by the American people. Soy Alan Lilienthal. Y yo soy Natalie González. Gracias. Thank you.